Hello all my truth seekers, my name is Keisha. In this video, I will discuss Trump's assassination attempt. Was it fake and a publicity stunt? I may have proof. What is going on with this? Something is just not right about this entire event. Let's talk about it. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth. Oh, yes. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Before I discuss conspiracy theories and the proof I have of fake Trump publicity attempt, let's go back. <laughs> As we all may have seen or heard, the last debate wasn't good for Biden or Trump. Trump avoided questions and Biden only showed coherence when they started discussing golf. Then there were Trump court cases that were against him that conveniently went away after his fake assassination attempt. His greedy family suddenly emerges from the woodworks to support him, even his wife. Melania came up from her little hibernation. <laughs> now to add and milk this alleged fake assassination attempt, he shows up with a big cloth over his barely scarred ear. This is looking more and more like a PR stunt. Oh, and I have so much proof. The gunman at the Trump rally looked up information, apparently, online on the apprehension of a mass shooter from Michigan and his parents, who were charged in connection with the high school massacre in 2021. He went to websites that taught him how to make explosive, and he took a screenshot of a webcast of the Butler, Pennsylvania event only minutes before he opened fire in an attempt to kill Donald Trump. Thomas Matthew Crooks also conducted internet searches a week before the shooting to find out when and where President Joe Biden and Donald Trump would address the Democratic National Convention. These were among the details providing in a briefly with legislators on Wednesday by FBI and U.S. Secret Service officers and other individuals who were acquainted with the inquiry. But get this, this shooter was seen in a Black Rock commercial. Mm hmm take a look. Donald Trump's shooter was seen in an ad for Black Rock. And if you didn't think this whole incident with Donald Trump was crazy enough, the fact that Trump's shooter is seen in this video for Black Rock just adds icing to the cake. Black Rock is one of the biggest companies in the world that owns shares in just about everything. BlackRock has been widely criticized over the years for investing in companies that are involved in fossil fuels, the arms industry, the People's Liberation Army, and human rights violations in China. BlackRock was also criticized for its close ties to the Federal Reserve during the COVID-19 pandemic. BlackRock has been involved in these huge rumors that they were allegedly involved in owning Fox Network and the voting systems. And there were also rumors alleging that they were involved in this big cabal being responsible for the COVID pandemic. In 2020, BlackRock was named one of the biggest shadow banks due to their size and financial assets. And in 2021, it was deemed that they were too big to fail. And what makes this whole situation even weirder is the fact that BlackRock took down this video after Trump's shooter was seen in this ad. Like I said, some things are just too much to be a coincidence, but I don't know. You guys let me know what you guys think about Trump's shooter being seen in an ad for BlackRock in the comments. My name is Brian DeLalo. I teach AP and Honors Economics in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Financial well-being to me is knowing that I can be free to do the things that I love to do. I hope when I retire someday, they say, you know, that guy made this place a special place to come to school and gave as much as he could to help the community.
Oh, I have not finished yet. The elite planned the government's burial. Thus, we have elite and BlackRock. Remember that because I shall talk about that later. Now, let's talk about the shooting itself. What happened? Okay, so if we go over it again, as you can see, he paused, he was looking over to his right, and then he held his back side of his face, which is odd, and then he quickly went down. But here's what it's crazy about the situation. If you wish to go back, there is a pause before any Secret Service people come and they hold him down there and they all look like actors and i swear i think i've seen a few of them in some script and look at the people in the back they're acting very strange especially the guy in the little black blazer right there he was uh pretty much um sought out to be an ex-actor of some kind and you got people pulling out their phones no one is really feeling i don't know that injured i don't know how this fireman even got injured i mean he wasn't even in the arms of fire, but whatever. But look at this. You see what's going on here? The cops are the only ones who look like they're in protocol. But then again, they're acting like they're lost. And then Trump get up with this triumph, whatever. And they call themselves covering him, but he's still there. That's the part that's strange. That's not protocol. You get out of there right away. Out of there right away. See, look at them. Holding them like this so, they can, so he can get this pose. Look at this. This is seriously with hers as some beacon photograph moment this is fake as hell he should even have been still in visual for anything they immediately put his head down and they cover him and they pull him out they jump in the van and they out that's what the protocol is not sitting there let me have this photographic moment let me just do this and then they stayed in the car for a very long time before even driving off this is seriously all Stage, I'm sorry, it doesn't look right to me. Let's move on. Then there were the odd individuals that were behind Trump before the shooting incident, especially this woman who was acting strangely, almost as if she was prepared for the shot before it even had started. Take a look. Watch this shit, dude. Watch, you know, watch. She sits shot. down. Yep. Old, watch this. If you, uh, wanna Puts the sign up. Something to say. Take a look at what happened. Shots go off. She's completely, she's completely normal. And then watch. And then she's got her. What the fuck? What the fuck? People are freaking out. And she's filming. And she's just like right there. She's not even freaking. 
Oh, I'm still not done yet. There's more. Guys, here's the shot, but we should be paying attention to that guy right there. Vincent Fusca. Everybody knows JFK Jr. Oh, I'm still not done yet. There was a leak that the Secret Service agents were fake actors. Take a look at this. All right, uh, some interesting developments today. Uh, Kimberly Cheadle, the head of the uh, U.S. Secret Service, did participate in a virtual uh, briefing today. Senator Josh Hawley was one of the principal participants in that. Uh, Homeland Security Committee, Republican senator from Missouri. Senator, very good to have you. Thank you. How did it go? But badly. I mean, let's be honest, the Secret Service is out there and the FBI now doing these secret calls, these behind the scenes briefings where, by the way, they don't really answer questions. Uh, they limited, strictly limited the number of questions. The Secret Service director herself did not actually brief. She was present on the call, but didn't do hardly any briefing. When she did try to answer a question or two, it did not go well. She was not well prepared. This needs to be done in public. Bottom line, we need public hearings. We need a full and thorough investigation. Neil, what we know about this is that there were 62 minutes, 62 between the time that the Secret Service identified the shooter as a person of interest, somebody acting suspiciously, and the time he started firing shots at the president. I mean, what in the world is going on? We've got to find out. Um, I, I, I mean, of course, that briefing was yesterday. There are going to be many more to come. You, uh, you, have, you know, want to hold the authorities accountable and find out what, what was behind their thinking. But to your point, Senator, she has indicated she's not stepping down. Um, she intends to stay there. And unless the president and or Alejandro Mayorkas, her boss at Homeland Security, uh, pushes her out, she's there, right? Yeah, then nobody here's here's the pattern, Neil. Nobody in this administration is ever responsible, ever takes any responsibility for anything. Look at Afghanistan, 13 service members dead, hundreds, if not thousands of civilians left behind to the enemy. And what did Joe Biden do? Nothing. Who was fired? Nobody. Now we've got a former president nearly assassinated. We have a good American shot to death at this rally, others in critical condition, and no one will take any responsibility. I mean, these people ought to be gone. Absolutely, the director ought to be gone. The whole top echelon ought to be gone. But I tell you what, we're going to get to the bottom of this and figure out what these people were doing. How did they allow this to happen? Why did they allow a good American to be killed? Why did they allow Trump to go on stage knowing they had a potential shooter? It's outrageous. All right, guys. So we got to talk about some bombshell information that could give us more insight on why and how the failed Trump assassination attempt was allowed to happen okay because that in my opinion is what's going on here it was allowed to happen either because of extreme negligence or because of intent i don't know yet however i think it's worth an investigation i'm talking about an investigation outside of the fbi because i don't trust the fbi to give us the truth about what happened that day okay we need an independent investigation that can really shed light on why this was allowed to happen. And we have some information from Senator Josh Hawley, who is one of my favorite senators, by the way. I am very, very, very sad uh, over the fact that because of the whole fist thing on January 6th, 
Uh, he probably won't be running for president anytime soon. But if Trump would have picked Josh Hawley as his vice president, I would be extremely excited. Probably just as excited as I would be about a Trump Vivek Ramaswamy ticket. Uh, Josh Hawley is probably my favorite senator, no doubt. So um, he has done some good work because uh, Secret Service agents, uh, whistleblowers, have come out and basically stated that, hey, these people that were assigned to protect Trump weren't even Secret Service. So again, this could explain why we saw imagery like this that kind of shocked the country in regards to the people protecting the former president of the United States. Oh, to further show that this was a phony assassination, in a video that I have, a former British service agent and Trump supporter, just to let you know, acknowledges that there was something strange and improper about the shooting. So guys, Trump getting shot in the head. Pow! Is it staged or not? Look, I'm all for Trump. Absolutely. All right. Hate that comment or not. I don't give a shit. There's a few things that piqued my curiosity as being ex-forces and being on the private security industry for the last 12 years. So issue number one that I have with Trump getting shot in the head is that his hand comes to his head and not his head to his hand. And why is that important? Well, in a situation like that, and what I've seen in the past, when somebody gets shot and even what goes near them, the first reflex is to bring your head down to your hand, not your hand casually to your head. Number two, number two, I have a problem with his security. Well, after the shot was fired, two men jump on Trump and then literally a minute after you have three guys come on stage tooled up, skylining themselves, exposing themselves on stage. Would you do that? I believe not. Now, you might argue, well, they might have been told that the shooter was shot. Okay, well, what about a secondary shooter? Did anybody think about that? I believe so, because they're highly trained people. Number three, the exit was far too slow. What I mean by that? Well, they get Trump in the car and then the woman sits with her shades on, st standing next to the car for about 10 to 15 seconds before the car leaves. That wouldn't happen. Now, Trump, I do love you. And I do want you to take the power over Sleepy Joe. But I smell shite. Now, let's say it wasn't staged. What would be the motive to shoot in Trump right in the head? Well, number one is opposition. He's not controlled by the elite, so they want to take him out. Because he's not a puppet to the system. And the super rich wants to say super rich, why oh, they want to keep you as bottom feeders. Oh, number two, the population is sick and tired of being broke and the standards of living dropping every single day. And why is your living standard dropping down every single day? Well, guess what? They took the, the, the currency of the gold standard in 1972. What does that mean for you? Well, that means that the government has been printing money on demand ever since. And if you understand how supply and demand works, is the more you print, the less valuable your money becomes. And as they've been printing money and filling up their fat pockets like Vanguard and BlackRock, so they could get rid of that money to buy assets, they are hoovering up most of the assets of the world. But yet, Nobody gives a shit. And in the same time, they're devaluating your money and telling you the cause of everything rises and in inflation, which is not true. It's your buying power going down. So what could you do about it when these giants are in control? Well, about that situation, fuck all. But what you can do to leverage a situation is make more money. If your buying power goes down, what do you do? You make more money to counteract what's going on. So how do you do that, Vin? Well, in my eyes, the best way to do that is starting a side hustle selling digital products. A digital business which uses the same model as Uber, Airbnb, Credit Karma, Bankrate, Nerd Wallet. 
All these giants are earning not millions, but hundreds of millions and even billions. And you know what they all have in common? None of them own any products. Zero. So you as a common man could leverage the same business model and start generating money in seven days or less. Impossible. Well, have I given you a fully done for you business which was built by a multimillionaire who's generating 520,000 in five days? I'll repeat that. 520,000 in five days. Do you think if you use the same system, you'll be able to generate at least a thousand a month? I believe so. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes. I post them on there. I'm going to start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. I need to communicate with my truth seekers. They are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay. I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. Now, as you probably heard in a previous clip on here, BlackRock is the name of a billion dollar industry that literally owns almost everything. I did a video about them, but here's a clip of that. To understand the system and how things work on this game of chess, not to mention this man-made pandemic, you have to follow the money. Did you all know that people who owns pretty much everything also owns Pfizer and BioNTech? Yes, tech. Not engineering or chemists, tech. Yeah, but tech, yes, and they're called Black Rock. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of others, but we're gonna stick with Black Rock for the predominantly um, the duration of this video. Yeah, name sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, yes, this company is behind the vaccine. So the World Economic Forum and Klaus Schwab, and he's more of a face man, more of a front man for the organization, but he's the one making the press releases and getting all of the attention. But today, I want to focus on another person from the World Economic Forum. For whatever reason, his face isn't nearly as recognizable to the masses. They're, they're more likely to know somebody like Klaus Schwab than to recognize this man. And if you don't know who this man is, this is Larry Fink a.k.a. Lawrence D. Fink of the World Economic Forum, Board of Trustees. He is also the CEO, the Chief Executive Officer and Founder of BlackRock. And of course, the Council on Foreign Relations. Oh, and look, a University School of Economics and Management in Beijing, China. Hmm. So here's his big bio over on the World Economic Forum if you want to read it. But this is nothing. All of that giant list of titles and accolades is literally nothing compared to what he has his hands in, what he actually controls. Not just he has, you know, an influence in, but he has a controlling influence in. Okay, so let's start with BlackRock. In 1988, he founded BlackRock. Just think about that. 1988? BlackRock just started in 1988. When you see everything they have taken over, it will amaze you that they are not a very old company at all. They just happen to be created in 1988, which just happens to be the very same year that the director of the CIA, Herbert Walker Bush, took over the presidency of the United States. It is a big idea. A new world order. In 1988, he founded BlackRock. And they say, a global leader in investment and technology solutions. <laughs> yeah, a global leader for sure. Okay, so a lot of people, though, don't know that much about BlackRock. So I'm going to play a little clip from a super awesome video made by a Dutch creator. And I can't say her channel name here for obvious reasons because this right here that's highlighted on the screen is her channel name so i'm not going to say that but what i will do is put a link down below in the description box to an article that has an english translation of the full video 
Then in an effort to avoid talk about the COVID, I'm just going to play a couple of minutes clip just to kick this off with a little bit of a refresher about who Larry Fink of BlackRock and Larry Fink of the World Economic Forum, who he actually is and what his BlackRock company controls. Or it might be easier to make a video about what they don't control. That'd only take like 30 seconds. Dear fellow human, I think by now you are sensing that something does not seem right. But I also think that poorly argumented conspiracy theories have caused you to stay far from the fear-mongering media and conspiracy theorists alike. But please listen, because as you are watching, millions fall into poverty because of the corona measures of the past year. Even if the greatest economic crisis in history has not affected you yet, it will only be a matter of time until the rippling effects will hit you as well. This is not fear-mongering, but it's a harsh reality. Less than a handful of big corporations dominate every aspect of our lives. That may seem exaggerated, but from the breakfast we eat to the mattress we sleep on and everything we wear and consume in between is largely dependent on these corporations. They are the main characters of the play that we are witnessing. I know your time is valuable, so I summarized the most important data. How does it work? Let's take PepsiCo as an example. It is the parent company of many soda companies and snack companies. The so-called competitive brands are from factories from a few corporations who monopolize the entire industry. In the packaged food industry, there are a few big companies like Unilever, the Coca-Cola company, Mondelez and Nestle. In the picture you see that most brands in the food industry belong to one of these corporations. The big companies are on the stock market and have the big shareholders in the board of directors. On sources like Yahoo Finance, we can see detailed company info, such as who the biggest shareholders actually are. Let's take PepsiCo again as an example. We see about 72% of stock is owned by no less than 3,155 institutional investors. These are investment companies, investment funds, insurance companies, banks, and in some cases, governments. Who are the biggest institutional investors of PepsiCo? The top 10 of investors together amount to a value of $59 billion. But out of those 10, only three own more stock than the other seven. Let's remember them and look up who owns the most stocks of the Coca-Cola company, the biggest competitor of Pepsi. Now let's look at the four biggest stock owners. They are BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street. These are the world's biggest investment firms. So PepsiCo and Coca-Cola are not competitors at all. The other big companies that own a myriad of brand names like Unilever, Mondelez and Nestle are from the same small group of investors. But it's not only in the food industry that their names come up. Let's find out on Wikipedia which are the biggest tech companies. Facebook is the owner of WhatsApp and Instagram. Together with Twitter, they form the most popular social media platforms. Alphabet is the parent of all Google companies like YouTube and Gmail. But they are also the biggest investor in Android, one of the two operating systems for nearly all smartphones and tablets. The other operating system is Apple's iOS. If we add Microsoft to the above three, we see four companies making the software for nearly all computers, tablets and smartphones in the world. Let's see who are the biggest shareholders of these companies. Take Facebook. We see that 80% of the stock is owned by institutional investors. These are the same names that came up in the food industry. The same investors are in the top three. Next is Twitter. It forms with Facebook and Instagram the top three. Surprisingly, this company is in the hands of the same investors as well. We see them again with Apple and even with their biggest competitor, Microsoft. Also, if we look at other big companies in the tech industry that develop and make our computers, TVs, phones and home appliances, we see the same big investors that together own the majority of the stock. It's true for all industries, I'm not exaggerating. Whether we look at the world's biggest solar panel companies or oil refineries, the stocks are in the hands of the same companies. But they also own all big pharmaceutical companies and the scientific institutions that produce medicine. 
you know, our Congress and stuff are focused on, oh, should we break up the monopoly of these social media companies that are controlling free speech? And it's like the monopoly, the monopoly is well above them on the pyramid. BlackRock and Vanguard control all of these. So is it any wonder that when we see such intense censorship, and they also control, oh, look at these companies. Any these involved in anything going on right now? Johnson and Johnson, Moderna, AstraZeneca, Pfizer. Yeah, all primarily owned by BlackRock and Vanguard and a handful of others. But the point is, it's the same investors who own and control these companies. So is it any wonder? that this arm of their big mega conglomerate, um, I'm going to say it, New World Order. What I'm about to say is fact. The secret organizations of the world power elite are no longer secret. They have planned and are now leading us into a one world communist government brought on you by our own government. To lead and shape a new world order for the 21st century. And Vanguard is private. So that's very interesting that we don't have access to that information. Who are these people controlling the industries? I mean, at least BlackRock, we can see they're open. They're running the World Economic Forum, the world economy. When Klaus Schwab says this is the fourth industrial revolution, he literally means that they own the industries. It's industrial. That our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. A new world order for the 21st century. And we can make sure that the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are best utilized to provide us with better lives. And when he says, quote, provide us with better lives, I think he's speaking literally like him and the Board of Trustees, BlackRock, who runs the World Economic Forum, it's their surf and lord system. They want to own everything, literally own everything. Remember, that's what they tell us, we'll own nothing and be happy. Either BlackRock orchestrated and manufactured this attempt on Donald Trump's life, or they are the ones attempting to remove him. In my opinion, given that no billion dollar corporation will back a Democrat, I assume that BlackRock is assisting Donald Trump in his bid for presidency. In other words, I think both the little child are still alive. Most likely there are merely paid actors. They changed their name and handed them some money. For that to occur, money is required. To plan this fictitious assassination attempt, you need money. It is no accident that the young child in the stage attempt sh to shoot Donald Trump appeared in a Black Rock commercial. The fact that this purported fireman funeral ceremony was dubbed the elite is no coincidence. Either that or the higher powers are sending us signals and visuals. I don't know. Alternatively, Trump and his supporters are making a farce out of this. Alternatively, the power of B corresponding with the Aquarian age is providing crumbs of bread for Aquarians like me to figure out. Furthermore, there are other conspiracy ideas and decent individuals with eyes in general may perceive that something is wrong in this situation as you just saw in this video. I think that BlackRock is, that whole scenario is still debatable, as is the case with Trump and his team, and who knows who else, perhaps planned this murder attempt to help him win the election and gain favor with the public. Conveniently, they are inseminating tales concerning the Biden's health and his resignation claim. I mean, they're saying Obama said that Biden should step down. I mean, with the aid of TMZ, they are feeding misinformation to the media. Heck, TMZ, 
who would do anything for you if you paid them, okay? TMZ gets paid, you know, to perform a lot of things, including outrageous public relations stunts. So trust me when I say that money is money, okay? Now, furthermore, Trump might win a Republican Party nomination thanks to this act. We are still not sure how we feel about Biden in the meantime. Biden has not really confirmed or denied anything, despite the numerous images and speculations that we are hearing and seeing. It is literally up to Biden to either prove that he understands us or back off and let his vice president spearhead the campaign in this juncture. However, Trump is an insane chauvinist. Okay. The white nationalists who back him are evident and they will handle her. This is her meaning Kamala the same way they handle Hillary Clinton. In the event that Kamala takes the lead in the election campaign or that Biden withdraws as a candidacy, let us hope that Kamala has a greater courage and resilience to withstand the abuse and slander while running this campaign. I mean, they will literally abuse and slander her throughout this entire campaign. Let's be realistic. This is how the Republicans roll. Obama may run again or I mean Obama could run again or someone else like Michelle Obama. I mean they can take over. I mean I do not believe that there is a provision that that prohibits a past president from running for office again. We are now essentially left to see where our fates may lead us. According to the Simpson Trump will not live to see 2025. My terror reading told me he was going to pass away. Trump may as well accept his conviction or prior record for whatever applications they have. If he is allowed to become president, despite having been found guilty of so many offenses, he should be imprisoned because by now he would have either been, I mean, if he was a Negro, he would by now would have been either dead or in jail. I mean, let's be realistic here. Facing all of these charges. I mean, all of this crap, seriously, if he was a Negro, black man, whatever, he would be dead by now or in jail locked up. It is absurd how many crimes this man has gotten away with during his life. After everything he has done, I find it hard to believe that he is still a nominee. All this is accomplishing is persuading his supporters who white supremacists ideology that they are out to get him and bring him down. So all of this crap in the court and all this stuff, they think, you know, the leaders trying to get him and trying to quiet him down. This is all some conspiracy. This is what the, his white supremacists are thinking. Forget about the proof and Trump's actual nature. What is wrong with these people is beyond me. However, we cannot elect him since doing so would mean a return to the past. And it's already bad enough that religion is being forcefully ingrained in people's thoughts because in this new occurring era, spirituality and religion are at, are at odds with reality. Now, regarding the White House, we have an illusionist and the truth. So that is the race for the White House. We have an illusionist and the truth. Who will prevail? Let me know what you think below. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you can get notifications for when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Bye.